Two books written by different authors cover paranormal topics in very different ways. Ryan Buell's book, Paranormal State, My Journey into the Unknown, mostly pertains to some season one episodes of the A&E TV series, Paranormal State. Ben Radford's book, Scientific Paranormal Investigation, How to Solve Unexplained Mysteries, takes a scientific and skeptical approach in dealing with paranormal matters. I talked with Ben Radford and reviewed some points in his book about how to conduct scientific paranormal investigations. Ben is well published and has a proven track record for solving various mysteries. Since Paranormal State incorporates a pseudoscientific approach to investigations, I had Ben autograph a copy of his book so I could hand deliver it to Ryan Buell, founder of the Penn State Paranormal Research Society Club. This was in an effort to make sure Ryan had Ben's book in the hopes that he may better understand how to conduct scientific paranormal investigations. I've been investigating for uh, um, 10 or 12 years now, um, uh, working with the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, formerly known as PSYCOP. Um, it's a nonprofit educational organization founded in 1976. Uh, its uh, main magazine is called Skeptical Inquirer Science Magazine, and I'm the managing editor of it. Um, I also, I've, again, I've written five books. Since this interview, Ben has actually written a total of six books. I write for LiveScience.com, I write for Discovery News. Um, I'm very science-based. Uh, I bring a scientific and skeptical approach to it uh, unashamedly. I mean, that's, that's what I do. I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in mystery mongering. I'm not interested in, in playing up the mysteries. I'm not trying to debunk the mysteries. I'm just trying to understand what's going on. I investigate and usually solve uh, mysteries, whether it's ghosts, miracles, Bigfoot, crop circles. From my experience in dealing with, uh, with uh, you know, a lot of the TV shows and watching them and, and dealing with some of the people on them, it's pretty clear to me that they're not interested in solving the mysteries. That's not what they do. The shows are not about solving mysteries. The shows are about trying to, uh, you know, trying to give people the impression that they're, they're doing scientific research into the cutting edge and the ghosts, uh, and they're simply not. Almost with, invariably, with uh, I, I can't think of any exceptions. Um, uh, when you look at the investigation methods used by ghost hunters, used on Paranormal State, it's pure pseudoscience. There's no logic behind it, there's no investigative strategy, um, there's very little science behind it. It's sort of just people wandering around dark places trying to scare each other and, and look scared to the cameras. Sure that. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're as long as that's you acknowledge that that's all it is. If 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 all you're trying to do is sort of, you know, do a half assed woo woo woo, um, I'm scared, you know, sort of amateur home video, that's fine. If you're going to either claim or or uh, try and put it out there that you're being scientific, that you're actually doing real investigation, that's a problem because they're not. I would like to know where the peak of the, the EMF goes in this house because through our past investigations there is a correlation between high amounts of EMF and the paranormal. They're using scientific equipment. I mean, that's, the problem isn't that FLIR cameras or uh, EMF detectors is unscientific. It is scientific, but they're not using it for scientific purposes. The measure of whether a piece of equipment or a person is scientific depends on what it's being used for. It's all about the, its intended use. So if you're using uh, an EMF detector to try and locate ghosts, um, then you're, you're not being scientific because there's no proof that, that uh, EMF detectors can detect ghosts. They, te they detect electromagnetic fields, which is not the same thing as ghosts. It's metal. It's metal? Metal is good. Yeah, but I don't think that's it, because no. it's spiked right here. Yeah. You're positive this is it, right here? Yeah, it's right here. Nothing. And there's nothing there. So can it just be these pipes? No. You're telling me these pipes? No. They have no electrical current the, whatsoever? No. Is there a copper? Okay. <sighs> I'm not trying to make the ghost hunters look bad. I'm not trying to make the paranormal state guys look bad. 
th this is not, I, I don't care if they look bad or not, I'm trying to bring good science to it. I'm trying to big, bring good investigations to it. Ben, what would you suggest to Ryan and the Paranormal Research Society, as well as others, to help enlighten them? Read chapter four of my book. And again, I, I don't bear him or the TAPS guys any ill will. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think that, um, I don't think that they're evil people. I don't think, I, I just think that they, they simply aren't informed about the nature of good scientific investigation and, and, and certainly skeptical investigation in ghosts. My, my purpose in, in writing my book and my purpose in, in, in doing a lot of the work that I do is to inform people, inform the public um, about science literacy. You know, what is good science? How does it work? Are there ways that we can bring good science to, uh, to topics such as ghosts? And the answer is yes. If Ben would like to bring good science to paranormal investigation, I figured the least I could do was bring a copy of Ben's book and hand deliver it to Ryan. I'm in State College, Pennsylvania today on Saturday, October the 2nd, 2010 at the Barnes & Noble Bookseller Store. And I was hoping to accomplish two things. One, to see if Ryan would autograph a copy of his book, Paranormal State, My Journey into the Unknown as well as I would like to present Ryan with a copy of a book to understand how to conduct a scientific paranormal investigation that Ben Radford had written called Scientific Paranormal Investigation. I asked Ben Radford if he would personally sign and autograph a book to Ryan and he agreed to when I met him in Indianapolis, Indiana. Let's go see if Ryan will do those two things for me. Come on, let's go inside. Hey, it's after the book signing and Ryan graciously signed a copy of his book for me, Paranormal State, My Journey into the Unknown. In addition to having Ryan sign, his co-author, Stefan, also signed a copy, also signed the same book, as well as Michelle Boulanger, Sergi Pobrezny, and Josh Light. So thank you everyone for signing the book. And importantly, Ryan accepted a copy that I gave to him of Benjamin Radford's book, Ben Radford's book called Scientific Paranormal Investigation. This is really a signature? That's really his. Yeah? That's really his. I, I saw him, he gave a, a workshop in Indianapolis, Indiana this last weekend. I would hope that uh, books such as mine and, and Joe Nichols and others that do deal with ghost investigation and paranormal investigation more generally uh, in a scientific manner would uh, would gain get some traction among the general public. The public might be hoodwinked by the mention in Ryan's book that other than some honest mistakes and time crunched editing, no one is able to back up the accusation that paranormal state is staged. Ryan goes on to say, in fact, an employee of James Randi, the world's best known debunker, told me they tried to debunk our show but couldn't. Questioning if that was true, I emailed Randy, and Randy replied, No employee of James Randy ever made such a comment. I suggest you request evidence to support this statement. So I typed up a letter addressed to Ryan, and I said, I am requesting evidence that supports your statement, such as the employee's name, days you talked, and the method used to talk. Sent it off in the U.S. mail to Ryan. That's the actual envelope there. Also, I sent Ryan the same message in an email, and I posted an open invitation to Ryan on my website asking him to name the James Randi employee. I haven't heard from Ryan with the name of the James Randi employee who supposedly said they couldn't debunk paranormal state, so I call Ryan's statement Buell crap. Ben wrote that subjective feelings are a mistake in science and logic. To accept reports such as I felt a heavy, sad presence and wanted to cry, or I felt like something didn't want me there, is a mistake because subjective experiences are essentially stories and anecdotes, and they are not proof or evidence of anything. Observe as the essence of subjective feelings blends into one another and share the sameness of nothingness. That's interesting. I came into this room and my heart rate went up just a little bit, which for me, when that happens, it means that there's something that is aware that we're here other than residual energy. 
I feel really uncomfortable all of a sudden, as if suddenly a bunch of people just notice me for the first time, and they're not people I would want to notice me. I'm picking up real heaviness in my chest. This is bad. The energy in here, this particular room. Is there any teenagers here? The only reason that I can think of is just for dramatic effect. Uh, it certainly has no bearing uh, on science and has no basis in science. If you think about it, what they're sort of saying is that um, the less information that I have as an investigator, uh, the, the, the more successful I'm going to be or the more likely I'm going to find something. If this is true, then they should plug their ears, they should put on blindfolds, wrap, maybe wrap themselves in like a blanket and lock themselves in the closet uh, because maybe then they'll find ghosts. I mean, if, seriously, this is the logical extension of what they're saying. It's like, you know, that the, the, the less information they have access to, the more likely they are to find ghosts. Uh, if you want to, go, lock, go you know, lock yourself in a sensory deprivation chamber if you really think this is going to help you find ghosts. Real scientists, on the other hand, uh, want as much information as possible. The only possible logical reason why they might turn off uh, the lights to find ghosts would be if there's a very specific instance uh, of a ghost that's claimed to glow in the dark, that's claimed to emit light, for example. Um, you, you know, if you're looking for something that emits light, then yes, do that in the dark. But what you find is that if you actually look at, uh, at many of the ghost reports, uh, they, they, they find they're talking about shadowy creatures, that is, dark figures. And, you know, I mean, looking for a shadow in a darkened room is an exercise in futility. This is, you know, a third grader would know better than that, but they don't seem to. Whoa, dude, what, what? shadow big time, big time, right, right in this back room. All right, I just saw you. And that's the other thing, is that, is, is that you know, they, they turn the lights off so that they, there's, there's little or no light, and then they turn a flashlight on. So it's like, we want it dark, but we want just enough light to have the flashlights. Well, which is it? If you're going to turn on a flashlight, then leave all the lights on. Bring in some floodlights, for Christ's sakes. I mean, it, 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 there, there, there's no logic behind it whatsoever. Every Paranormal State episode contains scenes shot in the dark. I counted 67 episodes with scenes which look like they were shot with a night vision camera. The reflective eye scenes confirm that like most animal retinas, human eyes are reflective not only to visible light, like red eye and flash photography, but to infrared. Night vision has shown us that Katrina has a pierced tongue. But how many ghosts were found with the lights off? And now, some final thoughts from Ben Radford. I get the impression that most of the people behind these TV shows, they're not interested in the investigation, because otherwise they would do actual investigations. They're interested in their books and their TV shows and their talk, talk circuits, and that's fine. But uh, it's the difference between ghost stories and real ghost investigation. Again, my, my purpose is not to debunk ghosts or debunk other investigators. My, my job is to investigate and to solve mysteries. Don't pretend to do science when you're, when you're only doing pseudoscience. Don't pretend that you're doing any real investigation if you're not.